Okay, everybody, welcome to the class. How are you today? I hope you had a nice Tuesday. And uh, of course, we are going to start. So let me just check here. Okay, so here we go. This is the class for today. It's the last of the fourth week. And uh, this is the question for tonight. And also remember that we need to move on with the platform, which is this one, 3.9 homework. It's going to be very easy. You just need to click and then check what will be the best answer for this one. Okay. Also remember that we need to finish the platform this weekend. So please do all the exercises. And also remember that if you haven't, you or your company, if you haven't sent the papers for for you to inscribe to the next module, it's important for you to do it. Because um, if you haven't sent those, um, sometimes that makes the papers to get slower and then we start later. I mean, we are going to start maybe uh, three or four weeks after we finish this one. So it's very, very important for you to you and the company to send the papers for you to inscribe to the next module. So it's going to be advanced three, okay? So we're gonna check about the attendance. Ada, Azucena Cáceres. Good. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. José Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. José Osmín Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ibeth Asensio de Mejía. Sonia Guadalupe Benítez de Claros. Present teacher. Good. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Okay, just a few by now, but we're going to start anyway. So, we're going to watch a little video and you are going to tell me then uh, what are your opinions or comments about this video. So, here we go. Here's a comment that's been sticking with me. Can you make a vid about Wells Fargo? Hasn't there been a scandal with them? Well, yes, there most definitely has been a scandal with them, one that can potentially be relevant to all of our lives. So I feel it's important for everyone to at least know a little bit about it. That's my motivation here. Simply put, for years, Wells Fargo employees created millions of unauthorized accounts on behalf of their customers. And here's what I mean by that. A person can have no interest in opening a credit card account with them. They never authorized it, they never contacted anyone about it, they never wanted it. Yet, someone from Wells Fargo would sign them up for a credit card. They wouldn't even tell them they did it, which of course is very illegal and it's almost unbelievable to me. I say this may be relevant to you because Wells Fargo is one of the largest banks in the United States. They're typically ranked by total assets and when we do that, there's four banks in the country that stand out as being significantly larger than the rest. Currently, Wells Fargo is the smallest of 
of the big four, but that still makes them seriously large. They have $1.9 trillion in assets and claim to serve one in three American households. So today, I want to talk about what was going on with this scandal. But first, let's go all the way back to the beginning for a minute. There was a man named Henry Wells and a man named William Fargo and a third man named John Butterfield. All three of them were owners of separately competing express companies on the East Coast. In the year 1850, the three of them figured that it would be a smart move to come together and dominate their industry on the East Coast. That newly combined company was known as American Express. Two years later, Wells and Fargo took notice of the California Gold Rush. People were traveling out there, the area was expanding, and they identified San Francisco as a potential new market for their express business. Now, Butterfield and some of the other executives over at American Express disagreed. They felt that it would be too risky and too competitive. So in a bold move, Wells and Fargo came together to start a second, very similar business on the West Coast called Wells Fargo. That's how they started and that's where they get the name from. In the interest of time and simplicity, I'm gonna skip ahead almost 150 years. Over that time, they had grown consistently, helped in large by a ton of acquisitions. Others were doing it too and the whole industry was consolidating. Norwest is the relevant one here. They were a bank based in Minneapolis that was actively growing. So much so that in 1998, they actually acquired Wells Fargo, but chose to adopt the name Wells Fargo for the combined company. I know, that part gets confusing, so let me emphasize it. The Wells Fargo company that was started by Wells and Fargo in the 1850s was acquired by a different bank named Norwest. So the company that we now know as Wells Fargo is actually Norwest, but the original Wells Fargo was combined into it back in 1998. I realize this may only sound like a meaningless naming distinction, but it does matter because the former head of the Norwest company, Richard Kovacevic, became the head of the new Wells Fargo company, and the next head of the company, John Stumpf, who is most associated with the scandal, also came from Norwest. When Richard Kovacevic first took charge of Norwest back in 1993, his strategy was to put an emphasis on customer relationships, which was actually a bit different from the direction of the industry. Over the next few years, many of the other banks valued speed and convenience. ATMs and internet banking was on its way, but Norwest preferred to build relationships with their customers by dealing with them on a personal level. Now, his real motivation behind this strategy was cross-selling. It was the idea that if they built a good relationship with the customer, they'd be more likely to open more accounts with them. An example would be, if you're happy with your experience with Norwest as it pertains to your checking account, you'd be more likely to use them when opening your savings account or retirement account or whatever else you need. Plus, you have to consider, the more accounts that you have with them, the more likely you are to open more accounts with them. In short, they were less concerned with attracting new customers and more concerned with expanding the products that they sold to their existing customers. Since this leadership from Norwest came to be in charge of the new Wells Fargo as of 1998, the strategy carried over. Which, I know, it sounds like a positive, potentially effective strategy, but here's where things went wrong. Eventually, the company took it too far when they became obsessed with selling multiple products to each customer. It got to a point where they were putting unacceptable pressure on their employees to sell them. They would provide performance-based incentives and generally high sales goals. I don't claim to know what was happening at each store level, but in some cases, they would require hourly conferences with branches concerning how their daily quotas were looking. If employees weren't meeting them, they would be forced to stay late or work weekends. And if they still weren't performing, they would be fired. That's the general idea of the culture that the company created. In fact, if anyone watching this actually worked for Wells Fargo at the time, I'd be very interested in hearing what you experienced and how it made you feel. So now, we have all these Wells Fargo employees that are incredibly motivated to open more customer accounts. They're motivated by fear, motivated by money, motivated because they wanted to go home on time. Plus, it's important to remember that there was a corporate culture created that seemed to value new customer accounts more than the ethics involved in how they were created. Thought to have started around 2002 and lasting until 2016 when it was all exposed, many of these employees just started saying, I cannot meet these unreasonable expectations, so I'm going to have to cheat a little bit. That's when the fraudulent accounts started and it 
it was getting pretty bad too. They would use the bank's database to find customers who had been pre-approved for a credit card and then just open a credit card for them. They would forge their signature and be careful to fill out their own contact information or give out fake emails on the paperwork so the customers wouldn't even find out it happened. If the customer did find out about it, they would cover it up by saying that it was a simple computer error or some other nonsense. They were signing up homeless people for accounts, having their own family sign up for them, just a lot of unbelievable shadiness. In 2017, Wells Fargo admitted to opening a possible 3.5 million fake accounts, which is far higher than initially believed. But I have to admit, it was producing results. I mean, a lot of it was phony, and I have to think, even many of those legitimate accounts that were forced upon the clients were, in the end, not necessary. But it looked like they were doing well. As of 2005, Wells Fargo has been led by John Stumpf. As I said, he was part of Norwest going back before Wells Fargo was involved, and when he took over, he continued with this strategy, maybe even intensified it. As part of Wells Fargo's 2010 annual report, he included a personally signed letter to the owners. I want to read a couple sentences from that letter. He says, 13 years ago, when I was head of community banking for Norwest Bank in Texas, before Norwest acquired Wells Fargo, our company set an ambitious goal to have our average banking household have eight products with us. The letter includes figures of how they have been effective in increasing their products per customer. At the time of the acquisition, they were at 3.2, and by 2010, that was up to 6.1. Remember, their goal at the time was to get that number up to 8. Then later on he says, I'm often asked why we set a cross-sell goal of 8. The answer is, it rhymed with great. Perhaps our new cheer should be, let's go again for 10. Senator Elizabeth Warren was very aggressive in holding Wells Fargo in specifically John Stump responsible for the fraud. I think she made a good point when she suggested that they were more concerned with their own sales goals than they were with providing the customer with the products that they needed. And that's not because you ran the numbers and found that the average customer needed eight banking accounts. Those statements just don't feel very customer oriented. Here's the consequences. Immediately following the break of the scandal, Wells Fargo fired over 5,000 employees. The CEO, John Strumpf, had to appear before Congress and Elizabeth Warren. In the end, there was no jail time for him, but he did get penalized. He was removed from his CEO position about a month after everything came to light. $41 million in compensation was taken away, and then there was another $17 million fine in January of 2020. He also agreed to a lifetime ban from the banking industry. As far as the various fines and fees and settlements resulting from the scandal, there's almost too many of them to keep track of, but here's a few of the bigger ones that stand out. In September of 2016, the world first learned about the scandal when they were fined $185 million from multiple sources. In May of 2018, there was a $142 million settlement resulting from a class action lawsuit from the fraudulent account holders. In December of 2018, they were fined $575 million by every state. That same month, there was a $480 million settlement with investors. They sued, claiming that all the fake accounts made it so that their financial reports were misrepresented. Like, for instance, an investor may have looked at those increasing products per customer and chose to invest based on that. The biggest one was a $3 billion settlement in February of 2020 with the Justice Department and the SEC. I know that these seem like really big amounts, and they are, of course, but not as big to a company like Wells Fargo with their $1.9 trillion in total assets. Their net income is around $20 billion a year, so all of these payments really equate to just a few months of earnings. What I view as a bigger consequence was given to them by the Federal Reserve. Responding to widespread consumer abuses and compliance breakdowns by Wells Fargo, Federal Reserve restricts Wells growth until firm improves governance and controls. Basically saying they let some pretty terrible things happen, so they can't grow anymore until they get their act together. And again, I realize it doesn't seem very harsh, saying you can't grow past the two trillion dollars you're already at. But looking at it financially, it has affected them. Historically, they have grown that number almost every year, and they have been stuck at that level since 2016, while the competitors around them have continued to grow. But I would say that their biggest consequence is the loss of trust. Trust. 
it's a bank, and you have a lot of choices when it comes to that, and I would think one of your bigger concerns when choosing one is how much you can trust them. When something like this happens, it just makes you second guess things. There were thousands, if not millions of people that made a mistake in trusting them before. Now, I'm not saying you should stay away from them, but it is something that you should be aware of and consider. In their defense, following the scandal, they now say they no longer set sales goals for branch managers. They made this commercial saying as such and saying that you can trust them again. John Stumpf is no longer part of the company and he has apologized and said he takes full responsibility. So I guess just keep all this in mind when it comes to dealing with Wells Fargo. Let me know in the comments, how has this scandal affected your view of Wells Fargo? I should make it clear that this is by far not the only scandal or shady thing in their history. There's been multiple issues come to light since this one, but I think this one is the biggest and the one that I felt is most important to focus on. This really is a deep subject, so any other thoughts you have about any of it, leave them in the comments. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching. Okay, what did you get from this one? I was just able to see part of it because I need to stand up and, and do another thing, but Okay. Mm, the most, I think the, the important shown here is the trust people can have after a scandal like that happens. Uh, but it seems uh, there was people that still uh, remained with them. Mm -hmm. The phrase that the uh, brought my attention is that he said, even though this was a fraud, this was a scandal, uh, but it was uh, like a good play because it was generating revenue. That is what I understood, something like that. Okay, very good, perfect, thank you. Yeah, it was a huge thing and it was kind of different from other scandals. But anyways, let's listen to other people. What do you think, any opinion, any comment? on what did you get from this? Any other opinion? Okay, so uh, I guess this was kind of interesting because it was not that the managers, they steal the money and they, uh, broke the rules. Actually, the problem was that they set very high goals, right? And the employees, they were under a lot of pressure. So the culture in the company was, I mean, it was so bad. They were so stressed. So they decided to create fake accounts in mind that one. Uh, employees, in several branches, they really believed that the only way for them to achieve the goals, not to be fired, I mean, or to get the bonuses that they were offering, it was that just to to lie, to lie, to say, uh, okay, uh, I'm going to do this paper, I'm going to make fraudulent papers here, so this person has another account, and then move on with that one. So that was the first big thing, the biggest actually. So uh, it was not good at all. We've been talking about CSR as uh, something that is uh, from the corporate that you will be able to take care not only about the social outside, but also inside for your own employees and that employees, if they are not happy, of course, something bad is going to happen. So this is the perfect example of that. So the bosses they were pushing that much so not only one employees but a lot of employees they decided to actually go in and create fraudulent accounts so imagine uh, think about the impact that the culture that the ethics in the work can have for the employees and for the people that work so it was 
huge. Of course, uh, the manager, the uh, president, I guess it was, uh, he resigned, but it was because, I mean, how is that possible? How is that possible that he didn't know that was happening? The normal behavior was like, hey, this is fraudulent, right? Somebody, nobody saw that one, maybe because they didn't want to see it. And then uh, nobody reported, nobody did anything about it. So they were like presenting numbers that were big, very huge, but not real. Uh, but this is about, about what the culture can be in a company. It can be something very good, something amazing. Uh, you can be very happy in the company where you are or the total opposite, right? So you can be like, mm, I mean, I have this job because I, I don't, I, I cannot find any other and I need this job. So I will do whatever it takes so I can keep it or so I can shine here in my position. So what do you think about that one? To the impact that the culture that everybody puts in the company, uh, how strong is that one? What do you think of that? It's very important um, company reforces your process. In this case, um, it was uh, was your was your um, uh, vendedores um, salesperson. So, salesperson. Salesperson or salespeople. Salesperson. Okay, salespeople. Um, uh, <laughs> salespeople. Um, uh, give give a credit uh, the different uh, person. Uh, this this a uh, customer um, was uh, fraudulent in this moment the giving um, credit uh, when um, maybe company the with wells uh, the banks the bank well fargo um, have have a um, reforce process uh, because uh, for this multa how do you say multa? Fines. Fine. Fine uh, was a very big uh, for for um, error. For <laughs> mistake. Error. For mistake. For mistake. Uh, exactly. The this this was the this your uh, employer. Maybe. Okay. Very good, perfect. Thank you, Sonia, for your comment. And actually, that is very true. I mean, uh, what the leaders put as a culture of the whole company, of course, is going to be uh, something that is going to reflect in every employee and not only in the employee, but also in their families and in all the community, right? So this is something very important. So have you ever experienced uh, in any job that you had unethical behavior, things that you say this is not correct in your job. Have you ever experienced anything like that? Exactly. Okay, so an example of any unethical, without saying names, of course, if you don't want, um, what happened? Maybe uh, when when uh, a company um, do a after office and some coworkers establish a relationship and doing um, maybe no sé cómo no no sería incorrecta maybe uh, like yeah, in mixed behavior. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah, and maybe uh, after that, the rest of the teams 
has our human resources, it has the notice about that situation and give um, AP for that um, situation, for that actions. Okay, very good. So that is it. And that's why sometimes, uh, well, always all the companies, they have a code of conduct, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the most common code of conduct that we were going to find there is that it's not possible for you to have a relationship with another peer, right? With another yes. coworker. Because of many reasons. I mean, in mind that the relationship finishes and you are not friend of the other people mm -hmm. and that person becomes your boss or you become head or here about his boss i mean it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's not good right it's not comfortable and uh, many things might be happening so uh, definitely that is something that is not correct it's not ethical so the most common outcome that human resources come is that one of you have to go to other company, right? So if you want to continue with the relationship, you need to go. And the most common, I mean, what it should be happening is that both people should be fired from the from the company, right? That is like the normal. Yes. Hmm? This, uh, I think that it's really complex because um, sometimes uh, some companies try to uh, share times with their co-workers and maybe um, in a after office always into the company you know in the terraza how do you say terraza uh like the place like the name of like the ah uh, but you mean like where you sit down and see the landscape uh -huh. or like yeah. Yeah, the yeah yeah uh -huh. yeah and maybe um, that company just try to uh, establish an intimate relationship with all the coworkers, you know. But it's complex when some people um, act, act is wrong mm -hmm. and did something incorrect because uh, they, and the, uh, sorry. And the, the thing is that uh, maybe that activities just uh, are uh, positive activities with all the team. Yeah, but at the end of the day, something is bad. Yeah, so it's, it's not correct, right? I mean, they mm. misbehave, they don't focus on the work. Mm -hmm. And that is like in normal situations. I mean, uh, you know, that sometimes has happened, I believe, everywhere in the world that some people, uh, they promote, for example, other people that wants to have a, a, an intercourse. So that is not correct, mm -hmm. right? So if you want to get the promotion, you need to spend the night with me. So that mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. that is a different level. I mean, it's different when you have a relationship and you fall in love. But the other one is even worse because it involves yes. the company and the values. So it's a big problem, right? Mm -hmm. Very good. So that is a very good example of unethical behavior. Any other that you have heard? Any other situation within any job that you have? Okay, so another question. Uh, so we have discussed that sometimes the uh, companies, they take advantage of the CSR programs just to, to get more profit, to get more money, to get more customers, things like that. What can the society do? What can people do so companies don't do that? What do you think? Do you mean like fulfill like a kind of program that is not covered yet? Yeah, I mean, imagine that a company, they have donations, they have uh, programs to, to give away computers and things like that, but they, they don't care about the, the people. They really want to attract more people and to, uh, to show that they are good because they want more profit, so. Mm. 
I think it's very difficult to find out the uh, uh, real purposes they have on, inside the company because we're talking about uh, an image of the company to the world, how they show up. And uh, one being uh, looking from the outside it's very difficult to identify if they are doing uh, activities or these kind of actions for real, or they care, do they really care for something like that? Or is just for showing up just to get more revenue? I don't, I think it's very complicated. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> very good. Yeah, actually, it's very difficult, right? You see the show, I mean, the programs, and mm -hmm. uh, in the newspapers, you see that this company is giving this and providing this program to employees mm -hmm. or people outside, and you never know, right? You never know exactly. For example, uh, it, it comes to my mind, uh, Teleton. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, but it's because I, I ignore, I don't know how much... Uh, a therapy could cost per hour, depending on the uh, illness. So there is a lot of non-information on my side, but also they are not uh, nonprofit companies that they will, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe they report to their headquarter or whoever is in charge of that about the, how they distribute the money. But when you look, not in my case, but I've seen a closer friends that they've been looking for assistance in those institutions and they charge you for the therapy. So maybe I don't know if the, this equipment they use is too expensive or I don't know if uh, the payroll is too high for their employee. So we don't know many things. We think they do what what is supposed to do, but whenever you see uh, what in the television show uh, they collect is uh, one thing, but remember that after that they've been doing another type of activities, selling this and that. They have also. I don't know how to say these boxes. Uh, I can see us. Uh, yeah, I, to be honest with you, I don't know that one. I'm gonna check. <laughs> well, but it is that. And, and so I guess after they are uh, presenting that activity in television, there is also a recollection for all those sales they made. So there is, a, a, I think the communication is failing because, mm, you know, when you don't know, I mean, as normal people we are, we don't know nothing about how much it will cost an equipment or a therapy or stuff like that. We cannot imagine if that amount they are asking for will cover or not cover, if it's real or what. That is one thing that comes to my mind. So for, for that reason, I think that is very difficult being from the outside to uh, discover if they are uh, doing things in the correct way or is just to generate revenue. That, that in this case, they are not profit, non profit, but there is always money involved. Well, actually, the example that you are telling us is a very good one. And uh, just to answer your question, uh, I thought that word, but I, I didn't believe it was that one, but actually it's that one. It's a piggy bank. So that is the mm -hmm. name of Alcanzo. Ah, piggy bank. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, that is a very good example because you're right. I mean, how many teletons have we had in the mm -hmm. history? Uh, I mean, for and how much, how much money did they get this time? Do you know? No, no, no. No, I don't because uh, to avoid... To get misunderstandings on my mind or anything, I better don't look nothing about that. Yeah, but it's a lot of money. I mean, it's mm -hmm. like millions of dollars, right? So mm -hmm. uh, maybe four, let's say, 
four is a lot of money. And if you think that that is done every two, four years, uh, I mean, and another thing that you say. And, and that, let's see, the television, I'm sorry to interrupt you, the televisions in bowl, supposedly they are not charging, charging uh, physical money, but they are presenting that as a donation. So that will reduce their taxes at the end of the year. So that is a very good point. So why, I mean, why? I mean, because as you say, uh, I know that also uh, when a, a kid, they go and they are in treatment, there is a mm -hmm. charge for that. Maybe it's mm -hmm. not very high, but there is a charge. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, I don't see, I don't see <laughs> many kids under a lot of treatment and this, I don't, I don't know. So the we i mean we see things like that we we don't believe right that is like the normal behavior the mm -hmm. normal behavior is mm, and also the stories that people say right because there are always some stories we don't know if they're true uh mm -hmm. let's hope not but anyways when there are some rumors sometimes maybe it's not fully true but maybe there is a little part that is kind of true so <laughs> it's, it's difficult it's difficult mm -hmm. so and of course, what the problem is that uh, maybe you have the money to collaborate, but you, since you don't believe in that one. Something prevents you to do it. Uh -huh. Exactly. So it's like not a good idea, right? So, <laughs> uh, so that is a very good example. And how, what can we do? I mean, we cannot do anything about it, right? I mean, we just see that they are collecting money and there are people giving it money and I don't know. That's mm -hmm. kind of strange. Anyways, anyways, and um, well, there are uh, in other countries uh, there are different situations. I remember that I had a friend. She uh, um, she is from here from El Salvador, and then uh, she really cared about people. Always ha was like that, and she actually she created a nonprofit organization. But she was working very hard. She uh, got some contacts uh, outside of the country and they, she got a lot of money, a lot of projects. She was very, very good. At the end, the nonprofit organization was uh, working in all Central America. And she was so good that she was offered a position and to go to other countries. She went actually to Sweden. She lives right now in Sweden. And she says that she has two jobs. The first job is like uh, Ministerio de Hacienda, something like that there in, in Sweden. And the other one is yeah, with a nonprofit. She works uh, in an organization that evaluates nonprofit organizations. Mm. The, the interesting thing is that she says that there in the, in the government office where she works, uh, everything is so transparent, she says, that if one person, any person, in the whole country, they want to see what they're doing. Anybody can go into the offices and ask, hey, what are you doing? Oh, I'm doing this to help people. I'm doing this program. And that happens uh, with the government, of course, not with all the offices. Some things are private, but, and there are, they uh, provide like uh, what they have done with the money, uh, how many taxes they got this they year. The reports and, in order. Exactly. The reports, you know, we recollected this and we did this and we did this project and we did, I mean, very, very maybe not perfect. I, I don't say that nothing else happens there. But that is actually very good. I mean, mm -hmm. it's something that if a company, a government, a person does, mm -hmm. I mean, you believe in them, right? Mm -hmm. And there is, a, a, on the other hand, teacher, a, because a situation happened to me at the beginning of the year. All these uh, kind of refugees for cats and dogs. Mm, I discovered there are a lot of people using pictures from a, for real refugees uh, in order to ask for money. And what happened is that when the real refugees need, uh, the money is not uh, going to them. Uh, I... Well, I was uh, touched by the situation, and I said, "Okay, let's. Uh, I'm going to to give a a food bag, uh, and also I made the arrangement, and I purchased uh, the food in the same place. We'll go 
to that place and, and deliver the, the, the food that I purchased. It was a donation on my end. But what happened is that the, the girl, uh, the one in charge of that, <clears throat> of that uh, supposedly refugee, because after that, I found out that she's always showing the same four or three dogs out there on the street. So she doesn't have a place like a real or, or a trusted place would be. And what happened is that this boy, when he was about to deliver, uh, this girl was so mm, angry because she thought that she would get the money, not the 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 food bag and it, it, there was like a kind of misunderstanding and, and I was no maybe she got confused I don't know when I was trying to call her back she was referring to the delivery boy in a bad way in a bad manner using profane words and I say what and, and I started studying and looking all type of things uh, comments they made they are like I don't know. I blocked that person. And what I did is I, thanks God, I found a real refugee. They have like 235 dogs. Uh, they are, uh, they, uh, it's not that they want to have do that amount of dogs, but what happened is uh, they, uh, I don't know if it's correct to use the word, the verb collect or they collect, yeah. Collect, okay. Dogs that they, had been damaged, they ha they are they were hard, hard to so they uh, are rescuing. They they are rescuing, that's the word. Is some dogs that they are missing an eye because I don't know, there are there are people in this country that I don't know why, if they don't have to eat on their own, why you will take care for a dog or for a cat. If you don't have with you, it's enough. You don't need to have pets. And, and, and I found this place and I, I, at the end, I say, thanks God that I met these people because I could help at that time. But it was so frustrating because you find out. And, and also this uh, gentleman, a very polite gentleman, he explained to me that sometimes in the refugee, they need to, to use like uh, water print it, when they create videos stuff like that because a lot of people steal their videos and pictures and they create go found links and you just don't imagine she's he said how many people makes fraud using all kind of pictures of my dogs it, it's so it's hard there are real associations but there are a lot of them that they are fake okay and that is a real problem. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, I guess that is one of the reasons that Salvadorians, I mean, we really want to help, but we don't believe, right? So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we are careful about mm -hmm. uh, what we're going to do and where we're going to go. And, I mean, everything, not only to help people, but mm -hmm. if you are going to buy a cell phone from a person, for example, you, you try to be careful, right? Because anything mm -hmm. can happen. So, yeah, and... Uh, the good thing is that you have both experiences. I mean, you have mm -hmm. um, the bad experience with the girl, but then you look because you really I wanted to help. That. And you found a real mm -hmm. foundation about this. So that is, <laughs> yeah. that is very good because, I mean, that is maybe one of the things. If you really want to help, try, right? Try to mm -hmm. look for the right people so they can help you help. And one thing that I learned is when these uh, real refugees or non-profit institutions, they offer you to uh, uh, how can to 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 make the, the things for taxes in case you make your tax at the end of the, at the beginning of the year, stuff like that. So then you say, oh, they are legally established. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, uh, transparency again, right? So I, I guess you went and saw the refugee and, uh, and you no, saw No, I the... didn't. I just saw some picture. But okay. what happened is that it's near from my sister's house. Uh -huh. And she told me, no, no, you just, no, that's make this and this. And I'm and she offers to to bring it to that place. And I saw the pictures and I felt so, so grateful at the end <laughs> that I didn't. Maybe the other guy, girl. 
Very good. I mean, transparency again, right? Mm -hmm. So since the refugee, the last one was nice, I mean, they say you can come and see. And mm -hmm. that, that is something that we expect from, mm -hmm. I believe, from everybody. I mean, it's from, from your boss, from the company that they're doing something in a very mm -hmm. good way. We trust. Mm -hmm. okay? That's the That's first thing that we do. We trust, but whenever we start seeing things, mm -hmm. we then we we think mm, this is strange right and Maybe we prefer this... to do whatever we want to do exactly so that happens in i mean every kind of relationship that we're going to have so mm -hmm. we for for the very beginning we really believe but then if something's going on we know we know that mm -hmm. it's not it's not the good thing very good, perfect. Any other example on anything that has happened to you related to this? Any unethical thing that you have seen in companies or any, any program that they are doing? No more, okay. So we are gonna, uh, well, actually we're gonna read a little bit. It's not that much that we're gonna read and then we're gonna do an activity today. So before we do that one, since I don't want to uh, break the activity or the reading, we're gonna check the attendance. So Ada, Susana, Cáceres, Mendoza. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Fra, uh, Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present. Teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Iliana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present teacher. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Present teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present teacher. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. Sonia Guadalupe Benítez de Claros. Present teacher. Good. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Okay. So, thank you, Ada. I see your message here. So, we're going to check about a little reading, it's not that big. And then we are going to, to do a little activity. Okay, here we go. So why corporate social responsibility is essential for brand strategy. And we are gonna start reading. The first two paragraphs are for Juan Miguel Brand. Okay. Corporate social responsibility is typically associated with large companies, not small businesses. But as companies of all sizes are quickly learning, social responsibility is a contemporary business imperative. In particular, education-driven initiatives are popular with, uh, with small and mid-sizes business owners. Two out of three mid-sizes Business owners say, say they are seeking to improve community engagement through education initiatives aimed at a younger community members, according to Business News Daily. Unfortunately, despite the best of, the, of intentions, CSR often becomes an afterthought for small business owners who are too 
Bosi growing their business to focus on secondary initiatives like CSR. It doesn't have to be. CSR goes hand in hand with a smart brand strategy. Consumers both both with their back with their wallets, uh, supporting companies that demos, demonstrate concern for employee welfare, community development, environmental sustain, sustainability, and human rights. Good. What did you get on this? See, they are talking about obviously uh, the the topic what I am what we are talking about CSR, but they are refer uh, for the small or mid businesses that uh, they may be focused uh, her, their initiatives uh, in order to just to obtain profits, no, and not focusing on another situation, another activity, who could may help uh, to make, obviously, a, a major profit, but also uh, giving back to the society one, uh, one situation or one uh, thing in order to relieve uh, a situation or give a benefit to, to another people or to a sector or to a uh, maybe uh, yeah a, a sector is is good this this work yeah 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 so uh, at the end the lecture says that okay you have a good business uh, mid or uh, or a small business but uh, try to don't forget to this kind of situations because uh, nowadays is good uh, to the customers or is good to your company that customers customers sorry customers uh, um, note that your company is focusing uh, not only to get profit uh, but also to back or to bring back some uh, um, some um, how to say to fill some needs that society needs. Okay, um, I think uh, it is. Uh, that's my opinion. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Very good, perfect. So that is it. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is so important. And no matter, it doesn't matter the size of the company, uh, we still can go on with this. Sonia, could you please help me with the third one? Take the check. CS, we live. In a customer centric and highly connected world, world uh, where consumers not only want, want to feel good uh, about their purchase, but uh, also want to make use of social media to share the story begin the purchase behind the purchase behind the purchase and um, consumer sentiment uh, can make or break uh, a, a business uh, having a positive uh, social purpose and a core message messenger uh, that message res, mes, that reson, resonates resonate resonate uh, with your audience can be K business differentiator. Differentiator, I see. Differentiator. <laughs> differentiator. Uh, says creat creative brand strat strategies. Creative. Andrew Stroyd, uh, Andrew Miller, who works closely, closely with. 
closer. small business closer uh, with a small bus no, businesses businesses to help businesses um, to help to help then structure effective CSR programs. Okay, very good. So what do you get on this? Okay, so trust the client center for consumer. Okay, um the part um about uh, the, the your cult cultural or uh, the responsibility social is uh, about the customer um, about um, cons no, con the customer uh, perfil uh, perfiles or profile. how do you say perfil profile uh, profile Profile um, the the post um, the post the customer and your uh, target um, about the sentiments um, what that uh, age. Um, Hentlemen uh, how? Um, uh, also, uh, Basel in the strategy, the Andrew Miller, in um, what are, what are? <laughs> uh, also in in. In all uh, country, um, for example, different bank uh, have a promo prom, uh, no. promoted 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 um, responsibility social in the different uh, aspect uh, by customer. Um, uh, for example. Uh, the bank have a credit a credit green a what um, what they give a for difference and different um, different business uh, business different businesses business business different business and um, what or oh, not no that that uh, have uh, energy the energy the medio ambiente se me ha escapado la how do you say environment. 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 <laughs> exactly and in this in, in all country for example or um, clean the, the clean the the dish, um, whatever. Uh, only. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Yeah, I mean uh, it's very important, and definitely this is linked to the environment, the one that is one of the most popular, actually, the the environment on this. So the next one says, when good CSR goes wrong, how to ensure mutually beneficial partnership. So this is for Roxanne. Okay. Let me see. <clears throat> when good CSR goes wrong, how, how to ensure much mutually benef beneficial partnerships when it comes to successfully ex ex executing, right? Ex executing. Executing, thank you. CS, CSR strategy, even big corporation make mistake, especially, sorry, especially if they fail to consider the long-term impact 
of their effort to give back. Case in point, come shoes. From a marketing standpoint, Tom should buy one, give one. Model is model is model is a win winner. It's easy for customer to connect with a con concrete 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 yeah con concrete concrete is right concrete it's concrete okay thank you concrete concept like putting shoes on a poor child's feet rather than a more abstract concept like donation, donating, thank you, sorry, donating 10% of profits to research. But while the slogan may be good for businesses, critics say that the buy one, give one model creates dependency subs local initiatives and ultimately hurts local businesses. Has Michael Mars, M M Mason? Mason Miller, the director of po Poverty Core, a group, a group promoting entrepreneurial Entrepreneurial solution, thank you, to poverty tells knowledge at Wharton poor people aren't poor because they lack stuff. They are poor because they lack the in infrastructure to create wealth. Ultimately, donating a part of shoes may do more damage to the local economy than good. Okay, what do you get on this one? Well, um, they mentioned uh, examples. Um, the slogan, some shoes, buy one, give one. Maybe um, some, some people, and I include, I'm including in that group maybe, uh, try to share uh, with others with a little stuff. Uh, for example, uh, when I buy, I bought uh, blows or uh, different uh, clothes or shoes, and I have a new one, I have to share my, um, maybe my old stuff with others always in good um buen estado good good condition in, yeah thank you in good condition but maybe um the thing is that when you try to do that um uh, that uh, actions it may be uh, the the person who receive um get a um, a lot uh, comfortable situation because they always uh, are waiting for um some provisions and maybe they don't looking for uh, create a good environment to to get uh, more benefit by himself or herself or they herself um maybe as a person has a normal person you are uh, thinking to help others but at the end of the day maybe you are uh, creating or uh, yeah creating um how do you say um lazy lazy situation or lazy or try to feed in that uh, situation you know uh, when when you have a kid for example uh, maybe if you always are doing everything by 
by him or oh, not no. when you are always uh, doing something or everything uh, for for them for him yeah for, for them. them yeah thank you for them maybe uh, you think that you you are helping but it's maybe it's not not always is the correct way because uh, people or kids in general have to create a solution by uh, the rest of the situation you know for example uh, if um, they have to uh, do a task you know they have a cell phone a internet in the in his computer and maybe you don't need to do the homework with him but has a father always tried to help him um, or kids, but not always is the best way. And I imagine that the main idea of the paragraph is about that, that maybe you can help another person, but not always uh, is, is the correct uh, way because you are um, feeling like a um, lazy behaviors. Okay, very good. So that is so true. I mean, it was very interesting that part actually because, um, yeah, I mean, this, uh, this company, they were giving a pair of shoes to poor people, but I mean, you know, society are very smart and they would start saying mm -hmm. that is not good. I mean, if you accommodate them, uh, they will be depending on you. I mean, that mm -hmm. is not good, right? The last part is very interesting. It says that poor people aren't poor because they lack stuff. I mean, you can give a lot of food, a lot of clothes, but they will continue in the same situation, right? Mm -hmm. So they mm -hmm. need the yeah. infrastructure. They need their resources so they can create uh, wealth they need to create a way for them to earn more money but that is something that has to be consistent right yeah maybe uh, it's totally different when you know uh, i remember in the previous uh, years i don't know i, I don't know uh, i don't remember in what time it was but uh, the government uh, create opportunities for um, maybe i don't know adult person you know when someone try to look for a position in a government eh, has a um, como ordenanza o, o algo así a janitor sorry yeah janitor that's the word janitor janitor yeah thank you uh, maybe uh, they always was uh, looking for a young people, but I remember that maybe the previous uh, government, I don't know, uh, they tried to create opportunities for other uh, adult person. And you know, when, uh, well, the last time I, I was visiting a, um, Centro Historico de Salvador okay. at night. And I remember that I saw some uh, adults, uh, janitors in the street cleaning all. So I imagine that uh, maybe they have, um, they are not poor as another, but uh, Maybe uh, they uh, get the opportunity and create uh, a solution for by the present situation that he lives, because uh, maybe some people's some some people uh, doesn't have um, opportunity job because they are adults and they get that position and they continue and try to solve the, 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 the situation in his life. And I think that is, 
it's important when you give solution. To, to, so the thing is that you maybe you can help person, but not always you have to uh, give the solution because uh, they always uh, are waiting for that and they don't looking for opportunities by himself or themselves. Very good. So that is so true. I mean, uh, yeah, sometimes it's good to give the thing, but sometimes it's better. It's better to teach them the way that they can achieve something, right? So definitely, totally agree on this one. So let's check the next two paragraphs are going to be, and thank you, Roxanne. It's going to be okay. for Giselle. Not possible, uh, Ramon, not here, right? Roberto. Francisco. Hello, teacher. Ah, yeah, please. Could you please help me with these two paragraphs? Yes, teacher. Um, in the other cases, Jonathan, a pair of a glass may be just fine. Is this donation don't undermine an existing local industry? Warby Parker, for example, use money from every pair of glasses the brown sells to try local and give it basic AX sound and then sell glasses at a significant reduced rate. This true and otherwise needed beneficiary into responsible consumer, which where we park CEO, CEO made momentum sales and forward, greater demands, demands the, the recipes. The company partners with Vision Spring, a live Monday non-profit to manage the training and a glass sales. So how can you ensure your brand is more than just well intentional, but actually effective for business that wish to alleviate poverty? Miller recommend focusing effort on ways to create prosperity for families, such as removing barrier to education in other cases. Uh, approach my work as long as the recipients meet an environment are careful to consider. Other companies have found sources in providing micro loans or making a scholarship donation that restore community health rather than just alleviating symptoms or causes. Good, what do you get from this one? Um, uh, I understand uh, that the, uh, there are uh, companies that they uh, uh, give provides uh, a return to the to the community and in the way, uh, uh, for example, try to create a how they were uh, trying to create prosperity in the families. And I, uh, recently I uh, am watching a video about that, that uh, uh, this video said that the, the better way to uh, uh, create a riqueza picture, how do you say riqueza? Uh, wealthy or wealthiness. Uh, Repeatability, sorry. Wealthy, wealthy. Wealthy. Okay. And the, the better ways to create a wealthy is a give a, 
uh, a money for make uh, or for the, the family uh, make, a, for example, a business, a start a business. It is the, the, the better way to the, uh, how do you say, uh, sacar adelante or sacar de la pobreza? Uh, take up of poverty. Okay, take up of poverty to the family. And I think uh, this product is said, uh, so similar that the, the, the idea is a great prosperity for, for families about the CSR program. Okay. Uh, for that. Very good, perfect. So that was very nice. And uh, let me just check here. I'm gonna check into this one, but let me just. Okay. So this is like a little guide for us to create a, an actual program, a CSR program. So well, first of all, we have the class one scope. So what we wanna do, so for example, guidance for all types of organizations, regardless of their size and location. So who is going to be in charge of what? Where we're gonna, we wanna go? So that would be very, very important. Then uh, terms and definitions. So yeah, some people may not be familiar with uh, some of the words, some of the, the things that we're going to involve in the project. So it's very important for us to, to clarify that from the very beginning so everybody understand very clear the project, the program, even if they are just reading or watching a video. So it's going to be very, very important. So understanding social responsibility, history and characteristics, relationship between social responsibility and sustainable development. So for this one, we need to understand like the company, the values, um, what do we do? How big is the company? Uh, what is going to be the impact of the program? So everything has to be linked and included into this one. Then principles of social responsibility. Accountability, remember that that is very, very important. So we need to take account on the, for our actions, the things that we do. Transparency, as we were discussing earlier today, is something very basic. Ethical behavior, I mean, it, if you are going to run a program about ethical things of course you need to be that kind of person right you need to have the leaders that are ethical that they really care and they um, they are really taking care of employees respect for stakeholder interests of course remember that one of the things that we do is uh, i mean companies they want to get some profit so definitely this is something very important respect for the rule of law of course we are going to be careful and not to break the the rules and of course not to break the law for international norms and behavior and human rights that depends on the scope uh, that we're gonna have and then we have here like the rest of the guide so two fundamental practices of social responsibility are recognizing social responsibility so we need to recognize how important is this for us, for our employees, recognize that the impact that we're going to cause for society is going to be good. And then the other one is stakeholder identification and engagement. So we're going to take care of course on the goals uh, of the stakeholder have of the whole company, as we were saying, Profit is might be the, the one of the most important things. Number six, social responsibility core subjects. So an organization's governance and associated actions and expectations with respect to the following topics. So these are actions that we're going to take in consideration and what we expect to achieve with our actions. And uh, the topics are human rights, labor practices, the environment, fair operating practices, consumer issues, 
community involvement and development. So all of these or some of those are going to be like what we're going to do. As we were talking, even if you are talking about labor practices, of course, this is going to be something, something very good. I mean, uh, it, you don't have to go outside. The first very, the very first step is going to be to take care about your employees and the internal community. Then you can think about programs outside the company. Number seven, integrating social responsibility throughout an organization. So we have improving or reviewing an organization's practices associated with social responsibility. So that is the first thing that we need to do, to review, to check what we have, and then we can uh, assess and improve. Then communication on social responsibility, definitely. The way that we're going to tell not only our employees or the volunteers that are going to be involved in this one, but also the uh, society, the community, okay? Uh, uh, by, by biography, so authoritative sources and additional guidance, depending on the project that we're going to have. And we have uh, some others here. The relationship of an organization's characteristics to social responsibility. So we need to identify what will be the identity of the company and what will be the best approach for the community with the program that we're going to create. Understanding the social responsibility of an organization that is very similar to the other one. Voluntary initiatives for social responsibility. So how can we involve people so they can participate in this progress. I mean, so they are very important part of this. And then an ex like examples of voluntary initiatives sí. and tools for social responsibility. Y esta no hay gota. Hoy, la vieja. <laughs> okay, that was a commercial. So um, I was showing you this because what we're going to do right now is this. We're going to work two or three people together. And what we're going to do is to plan, to plan a program, a CSR program. Let's say for the English class. In mind that the English class, we want to launch a social, a corporate social responsibility program. So you are going to identify what we are going to do, how it's going to be like involve the values that we have in the class, uh, what will be uh, the plan itself? I mean, we're going to go and uh, teach people how to read or help elderly person or uh, help animals, rescue animals, what we're gonna do. And then how is that going to be done? Uh, we are going to, we're going to check, for example, like the way that we are going to to express that to our employees, how we're going to involve them, and what are the expectations of the results that we're going to have. So do you have any questions on what we're going to do? Questions on what we're going to do right now? If you have questions, this is the moment. Amazing. Okay, I'm going to create the groups then and we're gonna start working. I'm going to be there as usual, checking on your work and you will let me know if you have questions, okay? Good, good.
teacher the 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 steps you've been presenting are they in the in the manual uh, no they're not i mean it's going to be like uh for example what is the problem that you would like to implement and then uh which program is it uh, which values of the class you are going to get into them how you are going to implement I mean, it's going to be on saturdays it's going to be everybody it's going to be volunteer um and then uh, what are the expectations of the program so something like that okay let's try something of course i will be checking and i'll be back with you if you have more questions okay thank you hey, thank you teacher thank go you. ahead okay it's a pleasure Okay, in that case, Do you have any question about the activity? Hi, teacher. <laughs> Hello. I, I think that the guy is not available. Oh my goodness. Okay, don't worry. I'm gonna move you to another room right now, okay? <laughs> teach. I don't know the, the name of, of, of devices that they need, but we can organize a career, sell registration, collect found, and with this found, buy a new machine for the hospital. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know. That's I, I think. I don't know if you have any.
admire you because I I hear I hear you and you are fluent fluent. No, I'm learning too. <laughs> but I try, and, and if I mistake, I ask, and and that's it, and and that is. So we need to. It's better to ask how to do it, not to never do it. Mm -hmm. Good, good advice. Uh, have you finished already? <laughs> um, uh, you say that uh, benefits. We need to to mention benefits. I mean, yeah, it's going to be the program. What is going to be the program about? What values are you going to include? How you are going to deliver the program? Mm. Mm. Uh, how to deliver? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be uh, online. It's going to be like this. It's going to be with these materials or resources, things well, like that. We, we understood that we need to identify something, for example, in the English class, right? Yeah, I mean, this is going to be like a CSR program from the English class, not from a company, but from this class. Oh, um, well. <laughs> and so in that case, my friend, Juan Miguel, no sé si... <laughs> yeah, just, just, just try to um, encausar, teacher, how do you say this? Uh, reencaust. Okay, reencaust. Reencaust. Uh, re House. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I think like Claudia, the, the, the things that we just talked about uh, should uh, yeah. use in a program with maybe with elderly people or for people who are more than 55 years. Interesting. Okay, so, so you are uh, ready for you to present to the class. No, we're to, it's because we we understood that uh, we need to identify something in the English class. And so oh, we're yeah. talking about the no interaction for other classmates and how we think this will uh, actions to 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 increase or or maybe change that. We were discussing that. Maybe we misunderstood Ooh. a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's a, like a, a corporate program. I mean, it's going to be like, ah, we want to help kids out uh, on the street. and oh, We because... can switch it in that way, Miguel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. We can say that this program goes for kids learning English. Okay, kids learning English. Mm -hmm. Good, Let's very good. Kids learning uh -huh. English. I'm going to give you but... a few more minutes just in case. Okay, please, please. please. Thank you, teacher. Okay. <laughs> Hello, are you ready? Did you finish already? I guess we did, teacher. Perfect. So I'm going to give you just two more minutes because all the group has not finished and then we're going to move on, okay? Okay, teacher. Good, good. Hello, did you finish? The teacher, sorry, uh, teacher, uh, in this moment I, I am working. Ah, and, okay. Uh, yeah, I am a, a little busy teacher. Don't worry, that is not a problem. Thank you. Okay, thank you, teacher. Thank you. Okay.
Okay, we are going to check then uh, the first group. Nobody was there and neither on the second one. But let's take about the third. So uh, Ana Claudia, Juan Miguel and Roberto, who wants to share? Both, we're going to talk both. <laughs> of course, go ahead. Because we just say uh, Juan Miguel and me were there. All right, good, that's good. Uh, the program we are going to develop uh, is assistance for kids and er elderly people learning English. Good. And uh, we think that there are four uh, important things to mention. Uh, it's important to give confidence to people and they must learn that they are they are able to learn so we can our goal is to for they to be confident that they can learn uh, another thing is uh that the program will be given weekly with the participation of all our classmates we are going to be the teachers <laughs> okay. for this program and Miguel will mention the other two Okay. Sorry, <laughs> my mic was uh, off. Was turned it off. No so, way. like Anna Claudia, like Anna Claudia said, uh, in confidence uh, is the number one. The number two is uh, that we, all of us, we will be the. The teachers, the program will be given weekly from Monday to Friday, one hour daily. Mm -hmm. uh, trying to interact all of uh, all of the classmates with uh, with teacher. How to say this? How how do you say this? El público meta the, the focus group. No, no. Oh, I'm sorry. El grupo meta como el, mm -hmm. eh, a quién va dirigido. Uh, yeah, it's like the objective, objective uh, people or, or market. Okay, okay. Okay, the, the objective people is uh, are kids and elderly people. Kids uh, until 16 years old, maybe, and elderly people. 60. Uh, <laughs> uh -huh. 16 is like. <laughs> no, uh -huh. For kids, for kids. Uh -huh. Oh, yes, and, yes. Uh, uh, and for elderly people uh, who are more than more than uh, fifty-five years, maybe or sixty years, in order to uh, mix, maybe mix the groups, uh, and at the end of the class, try to make a review or recap about what you learned today. So maybe. Uh, one thing that I learned is the same thing that you learn, but maybe other other classmates uh, learn something different, and you take this this situation in that moment. So, uh, okay, I I learned uh, this because of me, but I remember that Chepito said that you learned this, mm -hmm. so I learned too or I, I remember this too, okay? Um, uh, at the end, uh, or in the, at, in the weekend, yeah, in the weekend, uh, uh, maybe it could be two hours of group assistance mm -hmm. in, or, in order to uh, participate the five teachers maybe uh, with all the group uh, who is taking this, this kind of course. Okay, this mm -hmm. is more than a CSR that uh, a formal course, but with all the responsibility with which is uh, involved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To clear doubts, so the, 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 those two, hour, two hours we think during the weekend will be to clarify doubts. And, and it's very important what Juan Miguel mentioned that to make a recap at the end of every session to identify what uh, the, the, the people learn, uh -huh. because sometimes uh, one understood one thing, but then the, the, 
the team member number two understood another thing, and that's a, a compliment. And we, what we are looking here is to learn each other. The benefits will be that we practice what we learn, but also for the uh, classmates, it will be to learn basic English. And we were discussing that is our plan. <laughs> Very good, very interesting, very nice. It would be a good idea to implement something like that if we had the time. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> very good, perfect. Thank you, my friends. Very nice. Okay, teacher. Okay, room number four. Uh, yeah, there was no activity there. Room number five, we had Fernando, Heidi, Maria Alejandra, and Sonia. So, who's going to share? Anybody there? Okay, teacher. I'll try to explain about our plan. Okay. Um, our plan is to create this um, career or marathon. How do you call it? A marathon, yeah. Uh -huh. This marathon uh, where you are going to pay to, uh, for participating and all the employees are I can participate, our family, our friends, and the money we're going to collect is uh, is going uh, to be destined to buy machines to a hospital uh, located in our community. Okay, so, very good. Uh, so with this, we're going to help this hospital and we are going to help our community to exercise. Okay, that is a win-win situation. Very nice. So I really love Fernando's idea. It was actually. Okay, very nice. Perfect. Thank you. So it was a, a very good plan. So I mind that would be good. And that is something very easy to do. I mean, it's something that you just need to organize. And then, uh, uh, yeah, it's going to be a very good. It will be a very good thing. Perfect, perfect. Very good, my friends. So... And uh, well, on the other groups, we didn't have any activity. Lots of people are kind of busy, but anyways, good for us to practice. So um, also remember for everybody that you need to ask to your uh, human resources about the, uh, the papers that they send, they need to send the, the forms and all the do we, you know, need, uh, need I don't know if you, they ask kind of on that one, but they uh, need to send that because some people, I guess, they have not sent that yet. So it's very important because remember if uh, by any chance you are delayed on this one, the, the next course is going to take more to start. So then that is something that we don't want, of course. And also remember that this weekend we need to finish the platform, all the platform. So I will be sending maybe on Friday who's missing. No, not on Friday, maybe on Monday. On Monday morning, I will be sending who's missing uh, because two days is going to be the last class. And after that one, it won't be possible to access the platform. So it's very important for us to finish. Do you have any questions? No, teacher. It's okay. Thank you. Very good. So my friends, I'm going to check the attendance and then we go to bed. Ada Susana Cáceres Mendoza. Good. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Good. Iliana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. Good teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present teacher. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. 
Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. Sonia Guadalupe Benítez de Claros. Present teacher. Good. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Okay, the one one of today for Sonia Benitez. My friends, it was a pleasure. Hope you have a very good night. See you tomorrow and dream in English. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Hello, Roberto. Do you have any question about the class or anything related to the English class? Mm 